Man, they're going to step up to the plate uh, and say, you know what, we're going to fight uh, to the end. We're here with you, Gideon. And, and uh, oh, 10,000 out of the 32,000, uh, 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 or excuse me, th uh, the rest of the, them left. Amen. And only 10,000 uh, was left uh, in that place. Uh, amen. Oh, Lord, uh, I don't understand what you're trying to do, but uh, uh, at least we got 10,000 here. Lord, I still believe uh, that you can do something. 10,000 is a pretty good group. Uh, amen. Ten thousands. Uh, we, you know, we're now down ten to one instead of five to one. Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but uh, Lord, we're, we're just trusting in you. Praise God. Uh, amen. And the Lord said to Gideon, "You know what? Uh, that's that's still too many for me." Hey Amen. That's still too much for me. I, I, I'm going to take them. Let's take them down to the water. Hey Amen. I'm going to. I'm going to divide, and I'm going to. I'm going to separate them there at the water. Praise the Lord. Uh, and we read about the separation process. Uh, hey Amen. And uh, and the Lord chose uh, three hundred men uh, out of uh, those ten thousand uh, men fighting men there. Three hundred men. Oh Lord, what you trying to do? Uh, amen. What are you? What's your, what's going on, God? Uh, Amen. Uh, we had 32,000, uh, and now we have 10,000, uh, and now uh, we're down uh, here to 300. I didn't say 3,000. I said 300 uh, men uh, are, are now separated, and God says, uh, those 300 men, uh, by those 300 men, I'm going to deliver Israel. Praise the Lord. Can you say, him? I'm going to deliver the Midianites into your hand. Praise God. Uh, amen. It's a walk of faith. Uh, I'm telling you what God wants is faith, uh, and that's what pleases God is faith. Uh, that's what's always pleased God is faith. Uh, he wants a faith-filled people, praise the Lord. Uh, amen. That don't look at numbers uh, to determine the power of God. Uh, God doesn't need numbers. Uh, God doesn't need material. All God needs uh, is some believing people that will trust in Him uh, tonight. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? Why don't you just worship the Lord right now? Praise God. Praise God. God, praise God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to talk about three pillars of victory here tonight. Amen. There's somebody here that needs victory in your life. Amen. I don't know who you are. Amen. I don't know exactly, amen, where you're at in your situation in life. Amen. But I know you're going through a situation, whoever you are. Amen. You may be more than one here tonight. Praise the Lord. 22,000 left. Amen. The scared left. Amen. Then there were, they were, uh, uh, they were, uh, they were uh, called out, uh, and 300 men left uh, to do the job against 150,000 uh, like uh, the fleas and like the grasshoppers uh, of the sand. Praise the Lord. And the camels were as the sand. Uh, hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. And uh, you know what? Uh, uh, but God uh, didn't stop there. God said, uh, Gideon, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a word. I, I want to give you a direction in your life. I, I want you to go down there to the side of the enemy's camp. Uh, amen. I, I want you to go down there and listen to what the enemy is saying. That very enemy that you feel like is gloating over you. The one you feel like is just is, is laughing and, and in joyous uh, dance over your life and, and the situation that you find yourself in. I want you to go listen to what the enemy is saying. And so he goes down. And he begins to listen with his servant Pura, however you say his name, praise the Lord. He goes down and he hears them talk about that dream. He hears them talk about uh, uh, what was going on there. And, and a big loaf of barley begins to roll. Amen. It begins to roll through the camp of the Midianites. And it just it just devastates. Uh, amen. The host of Midian. Uh, and the enemy says, you know what? That's nothing but the sword of Gideon. That, that's nothing but his God uh, and the sword of Gideon. Praise the Lord. Uh, and the Lord has delivered us uh, into. Listen to what the enemy is saying. Uh, and what the enemy of your life is saying 
being here tonight, praise the Lord, uh, amen, he's really in a place uh, of trembling and he's trying to act like uh, he's got the victory in his hand. Uh, he's trying to act like that he's going to, there's not going to be revival here in Wharton, Texas, praise the Lord. Uh, he's trying to act like uh, everything is going down the drain uh, and that there's no progress going in the church uh, and that the choir can't sing it just right uh, and this and that over there. Uh, amen. I look at so and so over there. Hey, amen. You need to kick that old boy. Uh, amen. And give him a shove on the behind uh, and tell him, you know what? Uh, amen. My God uh, is in control uh, here tonight. Praise the Lord. Uh, and my God said, I'm going to get the victory. Praise the Lord. My God has given me a promise. Uh, he said, go and listen to what the enemy is saying. Can you hear what the enemy's saying right now? Oh, amen. Last time I came up against God, amen, it was a quick exit from heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I tremble to feel that the end time is coming for me. Amen. There's just a short time left for me. And he's trembling over there trying to make you think, amen, that you're the one that's going down the drain when it's him that's about to go down, literally down the drain into a bottomless drain pit. Praise God. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. The enemy is trembling. The enemy is in fear and derision because of God's power. Praise the Lord. We serve the almighty God. Amen. We don't serve the half mighty God. We serve the almighty God here tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I serve the almighty God here tonight. It wasn't just a few months ago that I was diagnosed uh, with rheumatoid arthritis and you probably heard about all that too praise the Lord uh, amen but the doctor said you're you're, you're probably uh, gonna have to uh, uh, be on treatment uh, and uh, and we're just gonna have to do some things uh, uh, to help you out but uh, uh, this is uh, an uncurable disease uh, an uncurable sickness praise the Lord uh, amen but uh, you know what I stand here today uh, without a bit of arthritis in my body praise the Lord I don't have to fear shriveling all up, praise God. Why? Because I serve the almighty God here in this place. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you say praise God? And if he can heal arthritis, he can save your son and your child and your daughter. Amen. If he can heal arthritis, praise the Lord. Amen. He can heal you from cancer. Praise God. He can, he can bring people back to life again. That's the kind of God that we serve here tonight. Well, why don't you just stand to your feet uh, and just lift up your hands to the Lord uh, and just begin to worship Him. Uh, praise God. Uh, why don't you just begin to worship the Lord? Uh, he's an almighty God here tonight. Uh, and there is nothing, absolutely nothing impossible uh, unto Him. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. There's gonna, there ain't nothing in this world uh, that's going to keep me from worshiping my God. Uh, there is nothing in this world uh, that's going to stop me here tonight from worshiping him and giving him the full glory that he deserves hallelujah why don't you clap your hands unto the Lord and worship him hallelujah with a voice of triumph hallelujah worship him because he is my oh my God almighty hallelujah there is nothing impossible unto him praise the Lord praise the Lord I just wish somebody would begin to see what I'm talking about here tonight and begin to grasp that there is a an enemy that is over there in the corner and he is literally trembling because God is going to do a mighty work in your life and he knows it. He knows the game is up. He knows it. That's why he's working so hard to try to deceive and destroy our families, your families, your children. He's trying to, it's time for some mothers and some fathers to stand up and say, you know what? Uh, amen. The sword of Gideon. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Our God uh, and the sword of Gideon. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Hey, hey, we've got the victory in our hands. Praise God. Amen. We've got it. What it takes to win the battle. Amen. All those other churches can have religion if they want to. That's what I said. I said all those other churches can have religion, that dead, dry, boring religion. And, and all of that stuff, amen, if they want to. But I want the power. I, I want the power, brother. 
Praise the Lord. I, I want I want to be where the fire falls. I want to be where the miracle happens. Praise the Lord. And that's right here, right now. Praise God. If you need a miracle in your life tonight, you don't have to leave this place tonight. Amen. You don't have to leave this place because he is the God that can do the work. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's just worship him again. Would you do that? Would you do that? Praise God. Amen. Would you just begin to worship God in the midst? of all your trials and your tribulations uh, and say, you know what? I'm going to worship Him. Amen. I'm going to worship Him. Praise God. You may be seated. First, He gives divine separation. Then He gives divine direction. You know what? God will always deal with your pastor. Amen. You say, oh, pastor, I, I wanna, I'm, I'm going to go start a church over here, over there. And Hey, you know what? You need to wait on your pastor. God's going to give him a word when it's time for you to go. Praise the Lord. Can you say Amen. You need to wait on the man of God because God's got to deal with him. God's going to deal with him. You know what? And if he doesn't follow the will of God, God will move him out. I'm not saying you're past, but whoever the man of God is, uh, God, God, take care of him. Don't worry about it. Praise that. You know what? That's what I tell people when they get worried about church problems. Oh, this and all that. Don't worry about those things. You just serve the Lord. You just serve the Lord for who he is and quit worrying about all that stuff. God will take care of that stuff. And I always tell my people, if I'm the problem, God will move me out of the way and he'll put somebody else in there they will do it right. Praise the Lord. Don't worry. You just keep loving God. Don't get a bitter spirit. Uh, don't get a down in the mullet gruff spirit. Uh, don't get a, a spirit that just begins to criticize uh, and look at all the problems uh, and all those 150,000 out there like the sand of the sea. Hallelujah. Oh, Pastor, uh, uh, brother, Pastor Bumgar, I, I, I just don't think we're ever going to have revival around here. Look, look at all the impossibilities. Look at all the past. Look at all the things that have gone on. I, and I don't know anything. Praise God. I'm glad to say I don't know anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whatever it might be. Praise God. I'm getting into hot water probably. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. But you know what? Don't begin to focus on those things uh, because that begins to instill fear. And that begins to instill doubt. And that begins to instill things into your life that God doesn't want to be there. And you know what? God may have to call you out. That's the saddest part as a pastor for me is to watch people have to be called out. Why? Because they believe the report of the enemy. Amen. They believe that the enemy is greater. The enemy is mightier. And God keeps on calling them down and their, and their fear keeps on getting bigger. Amen. Because they can't see that God's a miracle worker. Amen. They can't see because, you know what, they don't have faith uh, and they don't trust in God uh, for what they need from the Lord. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Don't allow the enemy to get inside your head uh, and begin to instill doubt in your mind. Amen. That is the quickest nail to your coffin, spiritually speaking, is when you begin to get a bitter spirit and begin to get rancor in your life. I don't know if that's a word in English. Rancor. I mean, in Spanish, rancor. <laughs> Rancorous. Is that a word? Amen. You begin to get rancor and you just begin to see everything on the negative side and the impossible side of what God wants to do. That's what held the children of Israel back. Amen. They, they begin to doubt God. And right in front of them, just a few yards across, was a victory. But they begin to see the giants. But they begin to see the walled cities. But they begin to see the impossibility. And just a few yards across. Imagine that. They were going to get cities that they never built. They were going to get vineyards that they never planted. I'm telling you, we're, we're standing in the same place spiritually that those people of Israel were standing in. We are at the end of the rope for time. Hey Amen. You don't have to be the world's smartest person to look and read the newspaper and see that we're in the last days of the church. Hey Amen. When the financials are shaking, 
Amen. People are trembling. People don't know where to go. Amen. And, and, and just a few days ago, somebody told me they had a, a friend in Merrill Lynch, I think it was, and they had put them on standby because they felt like something great was uh, in the market was going to happen. They couldn't even leave uh, their desk. They couldn't even, they had to bring their lunches and, and stay at their desk because they felt like something was going to happen catastrophic to the markets. Uh, amen. I'm telling you what, we could be living in some days uh, where we wake up one morning and our money is not worth anything. Uh, and all that we have saved for and all the big houses that we have been built. Uh, amen. It all goes down the drain uh, because we can't pay it off uh, and the bank comes and takes it away from us. Uh, amen. I'm telling you what, uh, it's not time to look around in the valley uh, over there. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's not time to begin to count the sand uh, and count the fleas uh, and count all the grasshoppers uh, and all the camels out there. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's time to begin to look up. Praise God. Uh, because our deliverance uh, draweth nigh. Praise the Lord. Hey Amen. I'm going to look into the hills which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Praise God. Hey Amen. Somebody needs to realize that there is victory. There is victory in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I was talking to somebody the other day, and my mind's kind of crazy. I, I know, and I admit it. You may be seeing it. Hey Amen. I said, you know what? When the, when the Lord comes... It's going to be really funny because uh, I'm pretty sure our clothes are not going to go and our shoes are not going to go and there's going to be uh, first the shoes and then the clothes are going to fall. <laughs> And then the, all the undergarments, praise the Lord, uh, amen. And all the other things are going to fall on top of that. And, and some of us are going to be driving cars, uh, and, and, and the cars are just going to keep going uh, and blow up and do whatever's going to happen. And, and who knows what kind of a concoction of a story they're going to try to come up with uh, about thousands and millions of people disappearing in this world. Uh, amen. I, I hope all you go, praise God. Uh, I hope you're in that same uh, boat, praise the Lord. Uh, amen. I'm planning on making it. I don't know about you, praise God. Uh, I, I'm not looking looking around me. and I'm not desiring these things in this life. Uh, amen. There is a better life uh, in store. Praise the Lord. And let the devil laugh right now. But there's going to be one day uh, he's going to begin to cry. He's going to begin to weep uh, and gnashing of teeth and wailing. Praise God. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. I believe that's why he's working so hard. Amen. He's working hard to destroy us. Destroy our families and our faith. Amen. He, he's trying to tell you, you know, it's not necessary anymore. You don't have to live for, for God like that anymore. You can live like you want. You don't have to go to church anymore. Amen. You can just be at home and then you'll be all right. Amen. You can just listen to the radio and you'll hear the preachers on there. Amen. But you know what? Those preachers aren't looking out for your soul. They're not weeping over you. They're not crying over you. Amen. They're not heart breaking their heart over you in, in the sense that, uh, you know, that, that breaks our heart as pastors. Uh, amen. To see people that, uh, that go by the wayside. Uh, amen. And uh, you know what it all amounts to is what kind of ground are you? Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. If you're good ground, you're going to be something great for God. You'll receive great things from God. Great things will be birthed in your life uh, if you're good ground. Praise the Lord. Amen. Divine separation, divine direction, and divine unity. That's the last one I want to talk about here tonight. Amen. How can we say we love God and we can't love our brother? And sister, praise God. Amen. How can we say we love God and we can't love our brother? can have unity praise the Lord amen the Lord gave Gideon a plan and Gideon got out there he said all right bring your trumpets he didn't say bring your swords we're not going to need that stuff don't worry about it God's going to give us the victory it's not going to be like you think it's going to be but God's going to give us the victory I want you hundred over there and I want you hundred over there and we're going to be hundred over here three hundred of us and when I break the pitcher and I blow the horn and all of us blow our horns and blow our pitchers and, 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 and break our pitchers, I want you to do the same. Amen. I want you to do the same. And so they broke the pitchers and they blew the horns. You know what? That's, that's what Hitler didn't like was unity 
as far as in his enemies. He didn't like unity. His was divide and conquer. That was his way of doing things, divide. You go through a nation and go right through the middle of it. Take control of the middle and then divide each and conquer each side. You know, that's what the devil wants. He doesn't want us to be unified. He wants us to be bickering from church to church. Amen. Over here and over there. Amen. He wants us to be in derision and in confusion. That's all that is, is confusion. Amen. That just, just, just it's like a, 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 a mist that just comes over the church. Amen. When we begin to get into this unity of the faith and of the brethren, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm telling you what, we've got to get unified in the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. We've got to get some prayer going on. We've got to get some fasting going on. Praise God. If we want to see revival, we're going to have to pay the price for revival. Amen. Praise God. You want to see your son saved, yet you're not willing to fast a day for him. Amen. You're not willing to fast two or three days for him. Five or six days for him. Amen. There ought to be a passion in your heart for revival. There ought to be a passion in you. When's the last time you taught a Bible study to somebody? When's the last time you even brought somebody to church? I, if, if every one of you brought somebody to church, I just want to tell my people at home. If every one of you brought up one person to church, just did your, your minimal Christian obligation of bringing people to church, I wonder what would happen. Praise God. Well, some of you are starting to squirm on me out there. Praise the Lord. Fasting? What are you talking about, fasting? Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I'm fasting. I'm going real fast to McDonald's right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's not the kind of fasting I'm talking about. Amen. I'm talking about leaving your food and don't eat your food. And the, the, the one time I told our people, we're going we're gonna to fast. Amen. They said, what, is that eight hours? Eight-hour fast. Said, what are you talking about? We're going to fast all day, and we're going to fast for three days straight, and we're not going to eat anything for three days straight. Amen. Some of you don't have a lick of burden for your church or for the kingdom of God. I'm just going to tell you right now. When's the last time you fast? I'm sure the church has gone on fast and stuff, but, oh, I, I, got, I, got, I got this and I got that. I can't, I can't fast. Well, guess what? I got low blood sugar, and I fast, praise the Lord. And the Lord helps me through, praise God. And the Lord gives revival, and the Lord heals, and the Lord moves, praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, you want the devils out of your life? You begin to pray and fast, and they'll begin to go out of your life. Amen. If you want revival, you just begin to break the pictures. You begin to shine the light. You begin to do what brings revival, and there will be revival in Warden, Texas. You'll have to build a new building somewhere. Amen. It must be time for me to quit. Amen. Praise God. Let me see that thing. Wow. Amen. Look at that. Amen. The sword of Gideon. That's what the enemy was fearing is a sword. Amen. He was fearing the sword of Gideon and the God of Gideon. Is that sharp? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Divine unity. And the Bible says that when they break their pitchers and they blew their horns, let's stand to our feet here tonight. That literally the enemy began to run and they began to cry. They were so scared for their life. All because God said, I don't want the 32,000. That's too much for me. I want real people. I want people that are ready for revival. And those 300 men said, all right, Gideon, we're here. And they began to blow their trumpets with all that they were worth. For all they were worth, they break their pictures. And the enemy, instead of seeing 300 men and hearing 300 men, they begin to hear multitudes. Over 150,000 is what they begin to hear more, 200, 300,000. It was probably multiplied by thousands and tens of thousands in their minds. And perhaps the tale had gone through the camp of the dream that that one man had had.
the vision, the dream that he had. And already in their minds, they knew the feat was in store for them. <sighs> the enemy might be gloating himself right now. Your life might be in shambles right now. Your family might be in shambles right now. You might be on the point of divorce. You might be contemplating suicide. I don't know. I don't know who you are. But I'm here to tell you. Oh, weeping may endure for the night. But joy There's going to come a dawn. There's going to come a light. And God's going to begin to shine victory into your life. If you'll just but put your faith in the Lord. I want to open up these altars here tonight to all of us. Amen. Let's just come. Let's just come and pray. Amen. You want victory in your life? Come on. Hey, man, come down here and you just begin. Hey, just begin to break those pictures. Of uh, Brother Bumgarner and his family. They're family to us. Amen. And uh, we just love them. And uh, it's always a pleasure to come and be uh, here at Peace Tabernacle, I think it is. Yeah, Peace Tabernacle. Got it right. Amen. It's good to be here again. And uh, I'll be glad to be the first one every time I come to Houston area. I'll be glad to be the first one. Amen. That this would be the first one that we come to. Praise the Lord. Amen. But uh, God is good here tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord is so faithful and so great. Amen. God has been doing great works in our church there in Honduras. And our, we now have our second church and uh, possibly starting a third church uh, here pretty soon. Praise the Lord in another city. Praise God. And um, we're just uh, excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. We've been seeing people filled with the Holy Ghost and uh, people baptized in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. It's just been a, a whirlwind. Praise the Lord. I don't know how to say it any other way, but we've just been teaching Bible studies like crazy. Amen. Having something going on every night of the week. Praise the Lord. Just about every night of the week. Amen. And uh, we're just seeing God do a steady work of growth in our people there in Honduras. And uh, looking forward to sending back reports. I think you're getting our newsletter. Is that okay? Yeah, good. Amen. So uh, we're just excited about it, about what God is doing. Amen. But uh, I want to ask my wife to come, and uh, she's going to sing, and we'll sing together. Just bring Samuel with you. That'd be fine. Come on, Sam. I'm up here with Daddy. Amen. Praise the Lord. in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to follow the Holy Ghost and testify for a minute. I sat back there and I just felt the Lord speak to me. It doesn't matter what your need is, God is able to do it. Last March, our church started doing a, a drive to raise money and I told God I was going to do my part. I was not going to give money that was given from the states to this project. And I said, God, what am I going to do? <laughs> and the Lord told me to make cinnamon rolls and sell them. And so I began to make cinnamon rolls and sell them. But I ran out of salt. And I became a little upset because I just bought three big things of salt. And I had used them all on the kingdom of God and I didn't have any salt left. <laughs> and I said, God, I want some salt. And I want some good salt. I want some sea salt. Now, a little thing of sea salt down there is very expensive. But I didn't care. I told God I wanted sea salt. About 
two weeks later, we went to the coast of Choloteco where we have our second church. And on the way back, we saw these mounds of white stuff. And I said, what is that? And my husband said, well, that's salt. I said, stop. I want some salt. <laughs> the first place we went only sold a hundred pounds at a time. I said, I don't need a hundred pounds of salt. <laughs> we went to the second place and my husband and another man went in this man's barn that had literally a mountain of salt in there. And I said, just ask how much it is. He came out with a sack. I'm telling you, it was probably 25 pounds of salt. And I said, how much did he charge you? He said, nothing. He just gave it to me. Well, I didn't put the connection together till I got home. And I got out my jars and I started filling them up. And I filled up and I felt like the little woman with the oil because I ran out of jars. And I began to put them in baggies to give away. And I said, the Lord spoke to me. I told my husband, I said, what am I going to do with all of this salt? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, you asked me for salt. Well, I went to my ladies Bible study that we have every month, uh, Tuesday night and I handed out the salt and I told them my testimony. I said, it doesn't matter what you need. It may be as little as salt. God will provide it for you. It doesn't matter. And the ladies asked me, the ladies asked me, they said, where did you get this salt? And I told them, they said, don't you know that's the best salt in the country? I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you need. God can provide for your need. Hallelujah. The five thousand hungry souls he fed on the banks of the river with two fish and five loaves of bread. Oh, what a miracle he performed for the multitude. And what he did way back then he'll do today for me and you. Oh, he's an old time God. Yes, he is. and you can sit down it was about a month ago the Lord called me on an extended fast and I didn't feel God that entire fast on the fourth day I called my sister and I said Audra I don't feel God when I get down to pray I feel the spirit come in me up in me and I will begin to pray in the Holy Ghost but when I'm done I'm, I, I don't feel God. She said, baby, keep praying. Keep praying. Well, we went through the weekend and nothing happened. I'm telling you, nothing happened. And I said, God, I've got to have a breakthrough. Well, the next week I became very sick. My husband told me, just stay home. And I was about to go to bed. And the Holy Ghost said, no, you need to go pray. So I went to the rocker and I started praying. And I began to pray for Wilson. Now, about two months ago, our church had gone on a three-day fast. And there's this little lady, Brother Wilson's wife. She, they have three young children. And she walks to church, or she used to walk to church. Uh, she did not want to be picked up for church. Uh, she has three small children, and she walked up mountains on dirt roads for miles to get to church. This little lady decided she was going to go with the church on a three-day fast with us. Well, we began to pray for her husband's salvation. Well, after the fast, we found out those three days, he would come home drunk, he, would, he came home high on drugs, and he would chase her and the children with a machete. The devil was mad. They would go out into the woods and hide 
for protection. Now, we had been in a drought for seven months, but those three days it rained constantly. I tell you, the enemy was mad. <gasps> well, I sat in my rocker and I began to intercede. I began to pray and I prayed, God, anoint Wilson to yield himself to the Holy Ghost. Anoint Wilson to yield himself to the Holy Ghost. And I prayed and I prayed until I felt a breakthrough. And I decided, well, I'm going to go to bed now. And all of a sudden my phone rang and my husband said, you're not ever going to believe what just happened. I said, well, what happened? He said, there wasn't hardly anybody at church. He said, but Brother Wilson was at the altar and he was just praying real quietly. And I went up behind him and just put my hand on his back. He said, and all of a sudden, he just started clapping his hands and he threw his hands up in the air and he started speaking in a heavenly language. I tell you, you may feel like you're not having a breakthrough. You may feel like you're not getting what you need from the Lord. But I tell you, keep on fasting. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking the Lord because he He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Oh, he's an on time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him, but he will be there right on time. Because he's an on time God. Yes, he is. Well, you can ask the children of Israel at the Red Sea, mean of Pharaoh behind them and his army. There was water all around them and Pharaoh at their back. But just out of nowhere, God stepped in and made a highway just like that. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. When I was in the hospital sick, that first night I thought I was going to die. I did. I went in. I didn't realize the signs that I had all were the bad dengue. The night before I had um, I had passed out. And that's an, a major sign of the major, uh, the really bad dengue. The nurses all night long kept coming in asking me, you're not bleeding, are you? And I just thought, well, dear God. <laughs> but I felt the prayers of the saints. That third day, I should have been in the hospital a week. That third day, I told the doctor, I said, I'm going home. I'm going home. The Lord completely healed me. The first day, my blood count had dropped 20,000. The second day, it dropped even worse. They began to talk to us about a blood transfusion. I called for family to pray. I knew God was able to do a miracle. And I'm standing here today. I went into the hospital, not with dengue, but I had a severe case of strep throat. And I had um, salmonella food poisoning. But when I left, I was completely whole within three days. I tell you, there's nothing... There's nothing that's too hard for the Lord to do. Since being in Honduras, we have seen God raise the dead. We were in the United States and my husband began to pray over the phone and God raised her back up. We have seen cancer healed. We have seen boils healed. We have seen God work. There is nothing, there is nothing too hard for God to do. If you are addicted to drugs, if you are hooked on alcohol, if you are hooked on prescriptions, I tell you there's nothing too hard for God to do. He is an on-time God and He will deliver for his people. Hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let's give a hand clap of praise to the Lord here tonight. Praise the Lord. 
He's such a good God. He's such a mighty God. There's no God like unto Him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Definitely the devil is mad. Amen. And I'm glad. Praise the Lord. I preached a message just not too long ago at our church. I said, the devil's mad, and I'm glad. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right next to the church is a witch doctor that lives, and uh, she threatened one of, uh, in fact, Brother Wilson. He's, they're living there at the church. They didn't have anywhere to live, so we opened up a place at the church for them. And they said, she said, well, I'm going to put a, I'm going to make a frog get in your stomach. And the other day we walked out there. I said, don't worry about her. I said, the Lord's got his hand on you. Don't worry. I said, and so we walked outside the other day, and there was two frogs in the middle of the road. I said, look at there. The frogs didn't get past this, this road right here. Praise the Lord. Amen. And two dead frogs on top of each other. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The devil can make his little noise. Amen. He can, he can chiar. Amen. He can make a, a, a little bit of noise. Amen. But you know what? He don't have anything against God and the people of God. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? I'm not scared of the devil. Praise the Lord. Amen. He can just take a hike as far as I'm concerned. Praise the Lord. Amen. He ain't got no power. Amen. Not against the church. Not against the living God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And I believe that we're fixing to break out into a greater revival. Amen. That we've ever seen before. I believe we're living in the last days of the church age. Praise the Lord. And, uh, I believe that this is the time for the church to begin to shine. Amen. And uh, this, is time, this is time for true revival. Amen. Here in Wharton, Texas, it's time for true revival. Praise the Lord. And I believe God wants to give it to us here tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you would stand your feet, we're going to go on the word of the Lord, the book of Judges, chapter 7. Book of Judges, chapter 7. Praise the Lord. Verse 1 through 7, then we'll read verse 9 through 21. Amen. The Lord just kept taking me back to this scripture here when I began to pray about coming and uh, being here with you. Amen. And uh, just feel like the Lord would want to speak to us as a church and individually as well. Amen. There's something how God can do that. Amen. He could talk to a multitude of people, and yet he can be talking to one person at the same time. Amen. That's just the awesomeness uh, of our God. Amen. If I can say it like that, praise the Lord. The awesome power of our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you have it, say amen. Praise the Lord. Book of uh, Judges, chapter 7, verse 1 says, Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched Besides the well of Herod, which is the well of trembling. So that the host of Midian, of the Midianites, were on the north side of them, by the hill of Moreh, in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. It's kind of backwards, you would think. <laughs> Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to and proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many bring them down down into the water and I will try them for thee there and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee this shall go with thee the same shall go with thee and whomsoever I say unto thee this shall not go with thee the same shall not go so he brought down the people unto the water and the Lord said unto Gideon every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, were 300 men. Amen. God doesn't need many. Praise the Lord to do what he wants to do. But all the rest of the people bowed down their, to their, bowed down their knees to drink water. 
And the Lord said unto Gideon, By three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel every man unto his tent, and retained those three hundred men. The host and the host of the Midianites was beneath him in the valley. And uh, it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it unto thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Pura thy servant down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shalt thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Pura his servant unto the outside of the armed men where, that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers. I want you to notice this for a multitude. And their camels were without number as a sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned it and that tent lay along and his fellow answered and said this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon the son of Joash a man of Israel for unto his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host look at what the enemy was saying look at what the enemy was thinking Amen. Praise the Lord. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered unto your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men unto the three companies, into three companies. And he put the trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow the trumpet with the trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of the camp, and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle of the watch. And they uh, had but newly set the watch. And they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all. And they cried the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Praise God. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried. Everybody said cried. And fled. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we pray, the title to my message here tonight is When Your Enemy Begins to Cry. Praise the Lord. When Your Enemy Begins to Cry. Praise God. Let's pray here tonight. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful for your word here tonight. I pray, Lord, tonight that you would just speak to our hearts in the only the way that you can speak to us. Lord, I need your touch here tonight. Lord, help me, Lord, uh, to deliver your word in a manner, God, uh, that would be conducive to a move of the Holy Ghost here in this place uh, and deliverance uh, and revival, Lord. I pray that you would just have your way uh, here in this place tonight, God, uh, that you would anoint us, Lord, uh, hallelujah, to receive your word, uh, to respond to your word, oh, Lord, uh, and see what you have for us in our lives here tonight. Uh, I give you the glory. And and the honor and the praise in your lovely name Jesus we give you the glory and the praise hallelujah why don't you put your Bibles down and just begin to clap your hands unto the Lord here tonight praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah 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 praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated uh, here tonight. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. There are many people in this life uh, that cry many hours uh, about problems that they have uh, and things that are going on in their lives. And I'm not here to negate uh, uh, the problems. I'm, I know that there are problems, and I know there are reasons uh, to cry and reasons to feel as if the enemy uh, is uh, on top of them, praise the Lord, uh, and that uh, it is a hopeless case uh, in their lives. Uh, amen. They are crying, uh, and uh, they are hiding uh, uh, behind the rocks so to say, so to speak, uh, uh, of life, uh, and behind the rocks of failure, amen, the rocks of uh, a place where there is no hope uh, in their lives, praise the Lord, can you say amen? Praise God. And, uh, you know, the enemy is uh, laughing at them, uh, and that's what they feel, as if the enemy is laughing uh, at them and uh, is uh, burlandose, if I could say it in Spanish. I always get the first uh, place when I come here and I always have problems, uh, amen, uh, preaching in English, praise the Lord. But uh, it, it would seem as if the enemy uh, is laughing and the enemy uh, is just uh, 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 enjoying himself uh, over uh, the failure of uh, many people and the hopeless situations uh, uh, of many people in their lives. Amen. That he is rejoicing uh, and they are crying. Uh, that he is laughing uh, and they are sad. Uh, amen. And perhaps there's someone here tonight and maybe many people here tonight that you feel that way uh, in your life. Uh, amen. Maybe in the past you've had victories uh, and maybe in the past you've had uh, great things happen in your life but uh, it just seems like uh, at this point in time in your life that the enemy uh, perhaps is laughing at you uh, and the enemy perhaps is saying you know what uh, you're not going to get up and out of this situation uh, you're going to be in this place and you're going you're doomed uh, for failure today amen can you say praise the lord uh, amen but I, I came to preach to somebody here tonight if you would just uh, allow me to do that uh, for just a little while praise the lord uh, amen the bible says weeping may endure for the night uh, but joy cometh in the morning. Praise the Lord. And if I don't preach to anybody else but the devil, praise the Lord. Let me let him know, praise the Lord, that weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Praise the Lord. What an awesome promise in the book of Psalms. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know what? There's coming a day when the Lord's going to turn it all around. Praise the Lord. I believe that day is today, right now, for somebody in your life. Praise the Lord. As you're going through that struggle and you're going through those trials and tribulations, praise the Lord, tribulations in your life, and the devil might be saying, you know what, you're not going to get out of this place. You're not going to get out. Amen. Look at the enemy out there. They're like grasshoppers. Amen. They're, they're like cam their camels are like the sand of the sea. Praise the Lord. Amen. Literally 150,000 or more of them out there in the valley and there they were 32,000 uh, of them uh, amen they're just uh, by hiding behind the rocks uh, looking out there saying uh, hey this I don't know if we're ever going to get out of this uh, Johnny this might be the last time uh, we ever see each other again uh, amen uh, I'm going to fight to the death uh, I'm going to fight this may never be I may never get out of this and I never may never see the light of day again uh, amen but I'm here to tell somebody praise the Lord uh, amen uh, God is going to turn it all around. Amen. In your life, if you just have faith and you begin to put your trust in the Lord, amen, the Lord is going to turn it all around and there's going to be a revival. There's going to be a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. There's going to be a mighty outpouring of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, the enemy might be boasting himself right now. Amen. But there's coming a day, there's coming a time Praise the Lord. A glorious day. Praise the Lord. A mighty day. The day of our Lord. Hallelujah. It's coming a day. Amen. Where all it's going to take is one little no-name angel. I know everybody always says that, but it's really true. Amen. Just a no-name angel to tie that old devil up, and everybody's going to say, is this the one? Is this the little creature, this little puny thing? Amen. That's been giving us torment all of these years. Amen. Is this the one that's given us all of this heartache? 
in life. Uh, amen. I'm telling you what, uh, the bottomless pit awaits him uh, and destruction in hell awaits him. Praise the Lord. Uh, eternal, uh, an eternal place in hell. Praise the Lord because it was made for him. Praise God. Uh, and you know who made hell? God made hell. Praise the Lord. Uh, and he made it exactly for the devil and everyone that follows him. The Antichrist and on down, praise the Lord. That's what hell was made for, a place of suffering, eternal suffering, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh. In the morning, you know, we have some promises in the Word of God, many promises, so many of them that we'd be here all night long trying to uh, figure out all the promises in the Word of God. That'd be a chore, amen, to come up with all the promises uh, in the Word of God, amen. Uh, you'd be going and going and going and never be able to stop, praise the Lord, because you'd see something the next time it come around, uh, amen, and there would be another promise there that you never saw before. It would just jump out at you from the, the pages of the Word of God, praise the Lord, uh, amen. Can you say Praise the Lord. Amen. We see here that uh, the people, they were in a hard place. Amen. 32,000 of them in a hard place. Uh, and uh, we find them at the well of Herod. Uh, amen. And that literally is the well of trembling. Uh, and uh, that's what was going on. There was some trembling going on. Uh, and there was some uh, uh, scaredness going on. Uh, and some things happening uh, in uh, uh, Israel. Praise the Lord. Uh, and the Lord said right off the bat, he said, uh, I, I want you to tell all the fearful. Amen. They just might as well go home right now. Amen. They just might might as well get up and go home because I don't need the fearful around here. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. You know what? Perfect love casts out all fear. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. When you're walking in the Holy Ghost, uh, you're walking in the spirit of love, uh, which is the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. You don't have to fear the devil. You don't have to fear the enemy or what the devil would try to speak over your life. Praise the Lord. Uh, you just begin to quote the word of God. Uh, you just begin to speak some things and say, God, speak some things uh, into my life, speak some things, Lord, and over my family, and your word, your spoken word, and the power of creation of your spoken word, amen, that will begin to do works in your life. The word of God, the spoken word of God, amen. You know what, that's the difference between man and God. Man has to have material to work with, but God needs nothing. All he has to do is speak the word, and things will begin to happen, praise the Lord, Hey Amen. That, that's what that man, the centurion, said. Just speak the word. He said to the Lord, just speak the word and, and it will happen. Praise the Lord. Hey Amen. What faith uh, from a Roman centurion. Praise the Lord uh, to say, hey, all you have to do, you don't even have to be there, Jesus. Uh, just speak the word uh, and it shall be done. Praise the Lord. The miracle will happen. Praise God. I wish somebody would begin to get some faith like that here tonight. Uh, hey Amen. You've got a situation uh, in your life. Uh, you've got some things that are troubling you. Amen. Just say, Lord, I need you to come by here and speak the word. Amen. And it shall be done. Praise the Lord. It shall happen in my life. All you got to do is say the word, Lord. And the troubles begin to fade away. Amen. That's what they said to the Lord. Lord, care, you don't care that we perish here in this boat. There was the Lord sleeping in the back of the boat. Praise the Lord, wherever he was. Amen. Just sleeping in the boat. Praise God. Amen. He got up and he calmed the wind, the winds and the waves. Amen. I'll tell you what. Hey, we've got the Lord on our side. If the Lord be for us, who can be against us? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Is he not a great God? Or is he a great God or not here tonight? Or is, is he the God? that you serve here tonight amen praise the lord praise the lord amen and i'm here to tell somebody amen that you might be crying right now you might be in the well of trembling in your life right now amen but joy cometh in the morning joy cometh in the morning Praise God. And the Lord said, you know what, those 10,000, they're, they're too much for me. Amen. I don't want Israel to say that they did it in their own hand. 
and to lift up their own hand and say, you know what, uh, praise God, we did it, we had revival. Amen. We had, we had a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. No, you know what? Uh, it's God that has a move of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Let God begin uh, to do the work in your life. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Why don't you just give a hand clap of praise the Lord here tonight. Praise God. Amen. The well of trembling. The well of Herod. Amen. There was a place of trembling. God said, you know what? I, I don't want that kind of people. Amen. I want a people that believes in me. I want a people that, that knows their God. Amen. I want you to tell those uh, that are fearful. And I'm sure Gideon was thinking that uh, it was just going to be a few people that were just going to go home. All these men of valor. 